All right, so as we always do, we start with the news and rumors first, and then we go ahead and move to your guys' Q&A questions. So ask the questions, but hold tight on the answers. Let's start with the news of the day, and we always start with the most interesting news first, and I'd say that would probably be the Jordan Reed news. Yes, we talked about Jordan Reed a couple of weeks back, and I told you guys, hey, Jordan Reed, there's some interest from the 49ers. It never developed into anything. Well, we're hearing those rumblings again, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So let's be honest. The 49ers tight end depth chart is not that great behind George Kittle. Kittle's great and probably counts for like four tight ends overall with his skill, but you still need good bodies behind him. And let's be honest, Ross Dwelly, 15 catches in 2019, is not exactly a surefire number two tight end for the 49ers going into the 2020 season. There is a report, we'll show you here in a second, from Ian Rappaport that there are multiple teams interested in signing Jordan Reed within the next two weeks, and I think one of those could be San Francisco. So here's what Ian Rappaport said a couple of days ago. Quote, one name to watch as teams gear up for training camp, free agent tight end Jordan Reed. Former Washington playmaker has three teams interested and plans to play in 2020, but it's a low-risk, high-reward signing. Again, remember, a couple months ago, this was rumored to be one of the teams, San Francisco was rumored to be one of the football teams interested in Jordan Reed. So I would go ahead and say they are probably one of the three teams that are interested in Reed. Now, here's the interesting fact about Reed and why he has not been signed and why he's a low-risk, high-reward player. So look at the stats here. He did not play last year due to a bevy of, I guess, pre-existing concussions. He had one during the offseason, but he's had so many throughout his career. But when he's actually out there and healthy and good to go, look at that, 600 yards essentially in 2018, almost 700 yards in 2016. But each year, he's not been able to play a full season. So you could bring him in, rotational tight end guy. You don't expect a full 16-game slate, but he's a backup tight end. You don't need a full 16-game slate. But he has proven to be a big-time red zone threat a lot more than what Ross Welley or, I guess, Helm, who they drafted, uh, or I guess the other person that they drafted later on in the NFL draft as well, Helms there from the Chargers. But I digress. He would still be better as a number two tight end behind George Kittle than Dwelly, so this could make a lot of sense. And we're talking about price. I mean, this would be a 2 or $3 million deal. It's not a lot. And the 49ers don't have a lot of money to go around, which we know because they're start trying to sign the actual best tight end in the National Football League in George Kittle. But this is an option for San Francisco. It will happen in the next couple of weeks. So don't be surprised if this slides across your Twitter feed especially if you're following me on Twitter, because I'll have it first on Acro Palace Mod, at least retweet about it. So follow me there. But if this slides across your Twitter feed, you heard it here first, they could be one of the teams interested in Jordan Reed. Now, what do you guys think about that? Should the 49ers sign Jordan Reed? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. As long as you can promise me that George Kittle will still get his money, then I'm all for this. As long as this doesn't fully affect the George Kittle money, which it might because they don't have a lot of money. But if you can figure out how to not do it, then sure, this would, would be great. I'd be all for it. He's worth the risk. A low-risk, high-reward player is absolutely fantastic. Speaking of risks, you don't want to take any risks right now, so you should be wearing a mask whenever you go outside, and we have the perfect mask for you. Look at these brand-new ones. So we have the official 49er ones, but now we have player individual masks as well. You have the George Kittle one up top, and then, of course, a little bit later on, the Jimmy Garoppolo one as well. They come in a two-pack just like this, where you can buy one individually. They are absolutely fantastic. They look good and they keep you safe at the exact same time. Chatsports.com slash 49 mask is the place to go ahead and pick one of these up. We have the three packs as well, which is the normal team ones, which I've heard from a lot of you guys on Twitter. You guys are a big fan of these. But three pack is just 25 bucks. Again, they're all linked down below conveniently in the description box for your clicking pleasure. Chatsports.com slash 49 mask Go ahead and pick one up. Look good, stay safe, in style right now. Okay, moving on. More news here. This one has a little bit more... I just say sourcing behind it in terms of uh, it becoming an actual reality. Jarius Wright could be on his way to San Francisco if things go the way of the rumor mill. As you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So who is Jarius Wright, you might ask? Well, he's a free agent wide receiver, most recently played with the Carolina Panthers. And this would make sense because Debo Samuel and Richie James Jr. obviously injured right now. And we don't really know when they're going to be available. We've heard rumblings. It's like, hey... You know, week one, maybe week five. We don't really know. So if they need another wide receiver, Jarius Wright is an option. Now, here is Ben Standing, who had this one on his Twitter account just a couple of days ago, where he said, quote, Washington realistically needed more wide receiver depth. And now for sure, with Harmon Dunn, Jarius Wright makes for an obvious candidate based on ties to the Turner Rivera. Don't know if he's on the short list yet. He is on San Francisco's at least and probably other teams. So this obviously is talking about the Redskins needing another wide receiver for losing Harmon. But you mentioned at the bottom there, he's on San Francisco's list as well as some other football teams. Again, a smaller wide receiver, more of a slot wide receiver, very comparable in size 
to Debo Samuel, which makes a lot of sense. He's also done some kick return. As we know, Richie James Jr. was the kick return guy for the 49ers last year. Brandon IU could do that. Nothing flashy, right? 28 receptions, 296 yards. Not like you're signing Calvin Johnson off the street. I mean, you're just going to get a rotational body to go in there, and maybe he plays better in a Kyle Shanahan offense. Maybe he doesn't. Who really knows? But the fact of the matter is, if you look at this depth chart, if there's no Debo Samuel there week one, and then you got to bump Ayuk up, and you bump Hurd up, and you bump Bourne up, that's a lot of very young and inexperienced and unproven wide receivers in your starting role. So maybe you go for a 30-year-old veteran who at least has some time in the National Football League. It would make a little bit of sense. And this, much like Jordan Reed, is not going to cost a lot, right? Like, this is a 1.5, 1.3 total in guaranteed money. It's just not a lot of money overall. So you could financially do it and feel fine about it and get him in training camp, see what he does. If he makes the active roster, great. If not, you cut him. No harm, no foul. This would make a lot of sense for the 49ers. Now, there's no guarantee that they're going to sign another wide receiver because we do keep hearing that Debo is going to be okay. But do you think that they will need to sign another wide receiver? If you do, give me a like on this video right now. I also mentioned earlier, if you're a 49er fan, you should like this video anyway. But if you think the 49ers right now should sign another wide receiver, you worry about Debo a little bit, give this video a thumbs up. I want to see that thumb, that, that like button counter go all the way up. And while you're doing it, right below that like button, of course, is the subscribe button, which you guys should probably click right now. It's the big red button, you know, same color as the 49ers. It's the best 49er coverage on the internet. Trust me, I'm unbiased, even though technically I'm the host of this channel, but you get my drift. Subscribe to 49er support right now. Scroll down, click it, click the notification bell. That way you guys are notified whenever we drop new videos. And why not hit the like button while you are down there as well? Because 25 plus thousand of you guys watch this channel and love this channel. So show us your support by liking and subscribing as we know a lot of you guys have already done. Okay, I feel like every Thursday we have a new season ticket holder update, and this Thursday is no different as the 49ers have yet again released more updates on the season ticket situation. So essentially, if you have in the, in the past been a 49ers season ticket holder, then you have been on the 49er email list the past couple of weeks. So 49ers are now saying they are expecting to not have fans at games in 2020, but they didn't go as far as say they are guaranteeing no fans there in 2020. You see there will be a difference here. They essentially said, hey, there's no new news, even though a lot of you guys will make this a lot of new news. So it's still up in the air, but they're toying with the ideas right now. Philadelphia has already been talking about this. Miami's been talking about this. Every single NFL team is trying to decide if they can have fans or not. My prediction is this. There will be fans in the stands. It will be limited. It will be small. And the odds of the average fan being able to afford one of the exclusive tickets is going to be pretty difficult to do. Now, NASCAR last night gave us an example of being able to have fans. They had a couple thousand. I think they had ten or 15,000 at Bristol Motor Speedway. They spaced them all out, and it was fun. So that's what I think the NFL is going to do. But much like the 49ers and other NFL teams, they are not going to go ahead and tell us what's going to happen until they know for sure. But an interesting update I wanted to have for you guys. Now, the best way to have fans in the stands by wearing a mask. Talk about this in terms of uh, being safe and looking good, right? So you can go ahead and pick up the three-pack of the 49er official uh, mask at chessforce.com slash 49 mask. Just 25 bucks to get three of them. Share them with your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandma, wherever you want to share them with. Or the new ones that just came out, which are awesome, are the team ones, right? There's a George Kittle and this one, the Jimmy Garoppolo one, which has the autograph on it, which looks really cool. And, of course, the number, the logo. These, of course, come in a two-pack or a one-pack, depending on what you guys want to get. All links and all this stuff is down below in the description box. Chatsports.com slash 49 mask is the place to go ahead and pick that one up. Here was the official release and the official announcement by the 49ers in the email. Quote, to ensure the health and safety of our staff, or sorry, of our season, our season ticket members, excuse me, players, coaches, and staff, and the greater community, and to comply with the state and local restrictions, we may not be able to host fans in a full or limited capacity this season. Now, you can panic and say, oh my gosh, what are they doing? But you just read the word may there. We may not be able to. It doesn't mean we will not be able to, or we might, may, right? May was the answer here, which tells us that nobody knows anything. The whole problem right now that's going on in the NFL is the NFLPA and the NFL have not announced a, a deal essentially to say what happens if a player gets coronavirus, what happens to roster spots and this and that. Once they get that done, it's full speed ahead for the season. And once you get full speed ahead for the season, then they will let us know if fans are going to be allowed to be in the stands or not. The question for you guys though, is you think that they will be allowed to be in the stands? I say yes. So I would type one down below for yes. But if you think no, then type two down below for no. Again, I want to see what you guys think. Do you think there'll be in any capacity 
fans in the stands for the 49ers this year, but I guess in the entire NFL, because it's not like one team's going to have no fans and some will. They either have no fans or they don't. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below.